through these in a little bit of depth, the person, the process, the product, and the press. And it's interesting that in our latest book, they put six Ps on the cover, yeah. which I think was a coincidence. I don't think they had any idea of the 4P model um, and has caused great trouble for my OCD since it's come maybe, out. Maybe, maybe we're two of a, those are two of us. Maybe that's you jumping out of the pod. I'm the one who's not task appropriate. Thanks. All right, here we go. So person's the first P. And there are, we know an awful lot about what is a creative person like. And some, sometimes we have to think about domain, speci domain specificity. So a creative artist will be different than a creative scientist. But generally, there's a certain amount of appropriate risk taking. Openness is the most important personality factor. And this can mean being open to new experiences. So in other words, uh, wanting to try new foods, wanting to go someplace you've never been before, wanting to explore. Um, and there's also a facet of openness to experience that is wanting to play with ideas. So somebody who would enjoy deep conversations or, or going to a museum. Both of these make up openness. Also, and very important, is prior knowledge. In order to be creative, you have to know what's come before, or you may not know what is original. This is the same way with context. If we look at a student writing their first haiku, we have very different expectations from a college student who's majoring in poetry and has read thousands of haikus and written hundreds of haikus. And that domain knowledge is so often overlooked. Yeah, so if you put yourself in this model, for example, and you go to the, the response that Kelly said that, you know, doctors need, need her handwriting or whatever it was, right? So here you are. Are you open to exploring a strange response like that? Are you willing to take the curricular risk, knowing that chaos might be impending, right? That you might fall off the curricular cliff edge. We've all done that. We've all followed a student into the swamp, and we have you know, 19, 20 other eyes looking at us like, is this just about YouTube following this weird idea? You know, because I have other things to do, right? So are we willing to take the risk? The nice thing you have to remember is you all are experts. You're the expert in the classroom. I think sometimes teachers don't hear this enough. And we're going to talk about this more. Expertise is something you all have. You know those students in the academic realm and sometimes beyond that better than almost anyone else, maybe better than anyone else, right? You have to trust yourself and your knowledge to say that if we start going down the curricular swamp, we're going to back out of the swamp, right? So, or to know this isn't a good time for risk taking, you know, that, you know, from what I know of this student, this isn't them wanting to explore an idea. This is them wanting to get me off track. Yeah, there are students that will want to get us off track on purpose, right? So I think, can we blend these things and can we help ourselves be a little bit more open? Can we take sensible risks? And do we trust our own expertise and knowledge of what we're doing? I mean, you're all professionals, right? You're all professionals. So I think, oh, it's a puzzle. So I'll walk you through this puzzle. There is this pipe that's cemented into the ground. This image, I don't know why this image is here. It's not out of the ground like this. It's literally cemented in the ground, OK? It's just to give you another perspective. So this is the image you're working from, all right? Inside, so this is a four-inch pipe. Inside, there's a ping pong ball, OK? Now, the ping pong ball is 0.06 smaller than the pipe, so it can barely fit in there, all right? Ping pong ball in the pipe. Does anybody know this puzzle? OK, good. All right, so here's what you have. You have a 100 feet of clothesline, a carpenter's hammer, a chisel, a box of Wheaties, a file, a wild wire coat hanger, a monkey wrench, and a light bulb. Okay? What you're tasked to do, and you can talk within your team, you know, your, anybody that's in group one or group two, you can talk amongst yourselves. But you, think a little bit on it first. Yeah, think about it yourself first. You need to remove this ping pong ball without damaging the ping pong ball or damaging the pipe or damaging the concrete. So you can't like chisel that out and just turn it upside down. Okay? This has to all stay intact like it is here. All right? Any questions about your task? Do you have to use all of them? You can use any combination of these. Okay? Can you Whatever read you want to use. Again, Excuse me? Can you read them again? Absolutely. Yeah. So 100 feet of clothesline, carpenter's hammer, chisel, box of Wheaties, a file, wire coat hanger, monkey wrench, light bulb. You can use anything that 
you'd have. It, 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 so it'd be like you just standing up here. You can't bring anything from your bag, and then you'll have those things available to you. Talk amongst yourself. There are ways to film this. There's one way that is 100% accurate. Yes. Is there anything else in the pipe, like water? There's nothing else in the pipe. What's the, the circumference or the diameter of the pipe? Um, it is. It's. 0.06 larger than the ping pong ball. Okay. You don't have a vacuum cleaner. All you have is this. See if you can come up with the response. What's your, oh, this is your, is this your? Yeah. We end at what time? That's the question. Because uh, okay, we started, we started 15 minutes. <laughs> we started 15 minutes later. Okay, so, so we'll still stop that. Yeah. Line, get it to a point where it's woven together to make a circular, like a plunger. Mm -hmm. Attach the weedies on the bottom of it. Yeah. Use the clothes hanger to press it down <laughs> on the ping pong ball. Okay. Yeah. And lift the ping pong ball. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, so like some sort of gluten plunger or something. <laughs> okay, yeah, that, that might work. That might work. Yeah. So maybe you can make a, put like a layer of Wheaties powder and kind of lower, slowly maybe rise it up. That's possible. There is a way to do this with 100% certainty. Yes? I was going to say, eat a bowl of Wheaties and call a plumber. <laughs> eat a bowl of Wheaties and call a plumber? That would probably work. What else? There's a way you can do this. You and your team. What could bring, what could extract this ball? Keep the hand. Good. If we don't Okay, another example? It's a box of weed. 